Good evening and welcome to our next video on our Understanding the Bible series. Um, I'm doing the story of uh, the rich young ruler, which can be found in Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 17 of that chapter. And if you want to read it, you can do so. Um, it's a very short story, um, but an important story, because the man himself came along and asked Jesus a very important question, a, a question which should be on the lips or at least on our, the, the very heart of every single human being. And it was, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to that man, you know, um, you know the commandments, you know them. And he says, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not lie, do not give false testimony. It's, um, I think it's, it says in the actual scriptures, which just means not to lie. Um, Honour your mother and father. I think that's a very important one as well. And very quickly that young man turned round and says to Jesus, you know, I've kept all these things since I was a boy. Very quickly, very adamantly, that these things he had never broken. These laws of God he had never um, betrayed. He'd honoured God as well by keeping these, these, these commandments. But Jesus, with compassion, with love, looked at that young man and said, you're still lacking one thing. And you, you, would, th you would imagine that that young man was wondering, you know, what more can I do? I've never murdered. I've never committed adultery. You know, I, I, I don't lie. You know, I, I, I don't steal. You know, I, I respect my parents. I, 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 I do what, what they ask me to do when they ask me to do it. You know, what, what else is there for me to do? You know, isn't that enough to get me to heaven? Well, Jesus says to him in verse um, 21, it says, One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And then one more thing. This is the very important part. It says, then come, follow me. But the young man heard this and the little wheels in his head must have been going round about. And he realised how much wealth he had, the property he had, perhaps livestock, perhaps even servants and slaves. And he was realising just how much he was giving up. And, you know, his heart sank. And in verse 22, you see that at this the man's face fell. His heart must have ached at that statement. Because it says he went away sad because he had great wealth. He wasn't prepared to give up that wealth. Now, you're probably wondering, you know, you've maybe heard some of these uh, videos before. And about how to get saved, how to become a Christian. And perhaps you've never heard this one before of giving up your wealth, giving money in order to get saved. Well, this isn't what this verse is about. Let's be honest about that. This isn't that the young man hadn't to give up his wealth in order to get saved. This wealth can never, ever get you to heaven. It was the second part of that statement from Jesus that was the important part. Then follow me. It was the act of obedience. It was the act of trust in Jesus that would have saved him, that would have gained him the inheritance of eternal life that he so much wanted. It wasn't about the wealthy which he had. Because Jesus, we went further on in that, that, that chapter, Jesus would, would explain that it's harder for a rich man to enter into heaven than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And that, at that statement, when Jesus said that statement, his disciples said, well, who then can be saved? An eye, a camel through the, the eye of a needle is impossible. But Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. But how is it possible? What must we do to inherit eternal life? What have we to do? Well, it's, it's very simple. In, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, it says, Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. 
And John chapter 3 in verse 16 he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him um, sh sh shall have eternal life. And then it also goes on, it um, says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is not by works lest any man should boast. And that young man, if he um, had to give up his wealth in order to get to heaven. Imagine the scenario, standing next to a stranger in heaven. I said, how did you get to heaven? How much did you pay? I only paid five pounds. Five pounds? I gave everything to get to heaven. Can you see where the arguments could, could arise? Every single person who gets to heaven, gets to heaven by the same way. And that is by faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Not by works, not by anything that we can do. It's by, uh, 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 because of what Jesus did in Calvary on that cross where he suffered and bled and died. And thankfully, as, uh, as Romans 10 and 9 tells us that God raised him from the dead. He is now in heaven at God's right hand, interceding for us, praying for us, uh, um, pleading to God for us. That when we pray to him, when we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. Because we have a, a mediator, we have an advocate in heaven, the, the man Christ Jesus, who is, who is pleading our case for us. And by placing our faith and our trust in Jesus, we, we are guaranteed that place in heaven. Not by the money which we have in our pocket, not by the, 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 the great wealth which we possess, not by how much, how much livestock we, we might have, how much land we own. It doesn't matter um, what great feats of, of charity which, which, we, which we do. You know, by dedicating our lives to, 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 to the orphans of Africa or, or, or to, to, to the famine relief um, throughout the world. No amount of good things that we can do, no amount of keeping all the Ten Commandments can get us to heaven because no man can keep all the Ten Commandments. No man can keep God's law perfectly except Christ Jesus. And that's why he came, that's why he was born, that he can demonstrate that it is possible. But unfortunately for us, because we are human, because we are mere, just mere mortals and sinners, we can't keep them. Jesus Christ was perfect. He was God manifest in flesh. And he came down here to demonstrate to us that it was possible to keep the law. It was possible to, to fulfil God's standard. But unfortunately for us, we aren't able to do that. But Jesus was. He was able to do it and that's why he became that, 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 that sacrifice for us in Calvary. That he was able to pay the price because he was perfect. He had kept all that law. And he, he, he sacrificed himself on that cross of Calvary for us. So that when we ask the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? We have the answer. Believe, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. That's all we have to do. We don't have to give up our wealth. We don't have to climb Mount Everest. We don't have to give up our work and, and, and work for a charity. Nothing except place our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. That young man, that's all he had to do. And even if he gave all his money away, it was the act of obedience, it was the act of faith and trust that the future was in Jesus' hands. It was in God's hands. But he, was, he, he, could, he couldn't place that trust and that faith in Jesus. He placed it in his wealth and he walked away sorrowful. He walked away sad because he wasn't saved. He hadn't gained eternal life. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to place your trust in Jesus Christ? Are you going to um, trust him that with, with the future, with, with, with eternity? I please pray that you do. And I beg with you that you do. And I, 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 pray, I pray that you won't do what the young man did and reject the call that Jesus said, come, follow me. Because that's what Jesus wants you to do. He wants you to follow him. He wants you to place your trust in him and your love and your faith in him.